What's up guys, Yale Greenfield, AKA the Live King. I'm back here in the Fort Lauderdale, Hollywood area, staying down on Miami Beach and enjoying about a month total or so down here. Just trying to get a little different flavor. I just got my seat in the game. It's gonna be 5'10 no limit, often played with a $25 straddle. So 5'10, 25. We're gonna get in there, fire it up, gamble a little bit, getting to know the pool down here a little bit. It tends to take time to develop reads on regs who play in your pool. It's hard to make decisions off of small samples, like one day samples, two day samples, one hour samples. A lot of people in poker, especially people who aren't good, tend to do that. And that's something I don't do. I wait to develop a sample with people, see how they react before I start going ham in one direction or another. If I do run into some of the regulars who uh, I think believe I'm a little tighter than I should be or are taking lines that I think I can bluff, I will be starting to look to do that more down here in Miami because I've been here for a couple of weeks now. Otherwise, if you're enjoying the content, please hit the subscribe button. It really helps the channel out. And now I'm gonna go in and try to uh, spin it up today, win some money. As an Ohio kid, I figured it was time to follow in LeBron James footsteps and take my talents down to South Beach. And in this first hand, 510, 25, no limit Texas Hold'em, the button has raised to $100 and we've picked up two kings in the big blind. I shoot it up to $310. And this is a little smaller than I'd normally go, but note that the button is relatively short stacked here. Shockingly, the straddle puts in the cold call. He has $850 behind. No previous. The button seems to be considering his options here. I'm sure he likes the price and just isn't sure if he wants to gamble or not. He does put in the call. So it's three ways to the flop here in a three bet pot. Flop is excellent, nine, seven, seven rainbow. And I think the key here is to make sure that we bet, but size doesn't matter that much. We just want to bet small. I go with $300. Straddles all in for 850. Button quickly gets out of the way and we call. Two's fine. We're going to go two times here. Board one runs out with an ace and board two runs out with an ace, so it's less likely he has an ace now. And after we table our two kings, he shows pocket jacks. So a cooler, especially it stacks this short. I had ace queen suited, you know, he goes all in. I put it five seven. I'm gonna call him. Maybe I was gonna go all in. Damn. Okay. You should've went all in too far. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. In this next one, I peel queen jack off in the big blind. Small blind raises it up to 75, and I am not a fan of playing a call here. So time to gamble. I re-raise $260. Two of us? Yes. Small blind's pretty sticky, he calls. Flop is king, seven, five, two clubs. So we flop no equity, no pair. We've got nil. Small blind checks it over to us. I go ahead and bet $200. Small blind does call. Again, he's pretty sticky. When the turn comes down a 10, we now have an open-ended straight draw. Any ace or any nine makes us a straight. The small blind checks, and this is a really good barreling card. We still have absolutely nothing. So I go ahead and bet $450. I pick this size because if the small blind does call here, I'm gonna have a little bit over a pot size shove remaining. Headed to the river. Small blind verbalizes to me that he doesn't have a flush draw. And now we hear him saying he's got seven outs. I don't really know what that means, but he does fold. You wanna see one time or no? I'm good, I'm good. All right, then I won't show. In this next hand, we've got a button straddle this time. $25 on the button and it folds to us in hijack. 
We make it $100 to go. Everybody loves a suited connector, so let's see what happens. Button goes ahead and puts in the call and it's heads up to the flop here. And it's a pretty good flop given that we're out of position. Queen Jack, three, two spades. So we have a flush draw and bet $75. The button does something I don't see a lot these days. He makes it $175. But here's the thing. With this small raise, this guy is on mega tilt. He stuck nearly $4,000, and I heard him saying earlier that his girlfriend and he recently broke up, so I'm not going to try to re-raise. I just call. Turn is a spade, so we now have a flush. I check again in flow. Hopefully, if he's bluffing, he continues to bluff. He now bets $350. And I think here, calling is okay, and even check-raising all-in would be okay. He has about $1,000 behind, but I think he's bluffing here a lot, so I just go ahead and put in the call. Rivers and Ace, and I check. All in. And he goes all in for $1,010. There's nothing to do here. I quickly put in the call, and he reveals Ace Five of Spades. So he semi bluffed the nut flush draw on the flop. Very nice. And he got there, and we get punished for opening this Eight Seven of Spades. Okay, guys, my apologies here. I'm still relatively new to this vlog game. Sometimes I make recording errors, and in this hand, I start recording a little bit late, but I've got 98 of hearts in the low jack. Middle position limps. He's a billionaire. Keep that in mind going forward. I make it $100 to go with my 9-8. The big blind calls and middle position calls. So three of us hit this flop here. Flop is pretty solid for our nine high. We've got an open-ended straight draw and a backdoor flush draw. And when they both check to us, I like semi-bluffing here, $150. They both quickly call, so three of us off to the turn. You got the two suckers on the thing here. Okay. Turn pairs the top card, so very bad card for us. Big blind checks, and our billionaire friend leads $200. A pretty odd lead and a really small size. I just call. I'm going to try to realize my equity here with my 9-8. The river double pairs the board, and our billionaire quickly checks. And here's the thing. I strongly consider an overbet here. I do not think this guy has a jack. But at the same time, I played a lot of live poker, and trying to bluff billionaires is just bad business. I think I'm going to have to take the L here. I go ahead and check knowing it's not possible for me to win, and he shows us bottom full. I am quite pleased that I did not try to bluff him. It's a struggle out there today for your vlogger. We make another small recording error here. Just started it a touch late. But in this hand, middle position limps. Cut off our billionaire buddy makes it 125 to go. And we are on the button with king-queen offsuit and decide to make it 400. And look, we're gambling here. We're trying to build big pots. We're stuck and it's go time. So back to live action. You see middle position put in the call and cut off quickly calls. So we've got a monster, $1,240 pre-flop, king-queen offsuit on the button for your hero. And the flop comes down, giving us top pair. You absolutely love to see it. They both check to me. 500. And I bet $500 for value and protection. All in. And we get a pretty shocking play here by middle position. He goes all in for 3,300. And while the cutoff is in the tank deliberating his options here, I'm trying to consider what it is middle position could have limped and then called another $375 pre-flop with that he now wants to go all in. And I've got some history with this guy. He's definitely not scared money, but he is somewhat passive. So having the king of hearts in my hand eliminates that. He can have the ace high flush draw, I feel like he can have a set of sevens or a set of twos. All those beat me. He might even have some king seven suited. I go deep into my live poker experience here, and I make a live king fold. Depends what the other card is. So he shows us an ace of spades and then a king. And when I told this hand to a buddy of mine, he said, what would Daniel Negreanu have done? And I said, I have absolutely no clue at all, but I did go ahead and make the correct fold. Under the gun has raised it to $75. He's a pretty tight player, but we get Live King's absolute favorite hand. So we got to raise it up. $275 to go with ace king of hearts. 
The button puts in the cold call. This game is action today. Under the gun calls as well. So what do you know? Three way, three bet pot here. And flop comes down seven, four, three, one of our suits. So we have a backdoor flush draw on two overs. Under the gun quickly checks. I think I should be checking here somewhat frequently, but I think under the gun probably with this pretty hard and the button could just have a lot of stuff. 350. So I go ahead and bet $350. And the idea here is I am probably gonna be barreling good cards for me up the road. Button folds. It's a good card to continue. Yeah, under the gun, shows us the ace of clubs, tells us it's a good card to continue with, which I don't disagree, but folds. Here we've picked up two kings in cutoff. Middle position opens to $35. And with our two kings, we raise it up to 125 And the thing to note in this hand is the opponent here in middle position, we do not get along, categorically. He goes ahead and puts in the call. He checks dark and the flop comes down 732 two diamonds. And I think betting or checking would be reasonable. I check for deception. Turn is a deuce. So when he checks again, we clearly have the best hand. I just don't think he's got very much when he double checks. So I bet really small, $75, hoping to induce. He does call. The river's an eight, changing very little. And now he takes an odd line. He leads $250. I probably should raise here, but I don't. I just call. And he shows a wild combo. 10-8 offsuit. So I might have missed a little bit of value, but in this case, I'll just say 2005 called, and it wants its poker strategy back. So we've had our share of ups and downs today, and we peel 10-8 of diamonds on the button. Hijack opens the $75. 265 265 and we go ahead and take it to the streets. Re-raise, 265. The hijack now clicks it to four and a quarter, tiny size. And while I don't ever think we should be in a four bet pot with 10 eight of diamonds, the price is just too good. YOLO, no gamble, no future. And we get one of the best flops we could ever see. We have a gut shot straight draw and a flush draw. Hijack bets 325, and facing this bet, we could call or we could go all in. Given stack sizes, I don't see any other choices. All in. I go Rip City, all in, 2425. I really prefer a fold here. That's the best outcome. And when he goes into tank, it certainly seems possible. Of course, if he does call, we've got a lot of equity against any hand. Good flop for me. Got shot straight flush draw. After he folds, we give him a little show, and we drag a nice one. So last hand of the night here, a couple of the action players, including the billionaire, are going to go home. So it is proposed that we do a $665 flip because one of the four guys that's involved has exactly $665 left. So that's how we come to this number. So we intentionally are not looking at our hand here. When we say a flip, it's basically blind. It's cold. We're not doing anything. There's no poker strategy here. But as a pro, you want to appease the guys who come in and give action. They don't have to be there. So this is a fun way to get involved, get a little gambling going. Maybe sometimes people even go on tilt. Now, I'm not saying that you should do flips for hundreds of dollars in your games at home. But doing a flip, giving some people some action every now and again is definitely a good thing to do in general. Now, the way they like to do these is that nobody peels their hand. So we don't have any idea what we've got, but we do know that we could win a pot of $2,660. Pick me. <laughs> Whoa. So everybody agrees to check in turn all the way down to the river here. And now it's time for the big reveal. Give me an ace or a queen. That is not, and when we turn over a five of clubs as our first card, we seem to be in quite a bit of trouble. I feel like an ace is our only shot at, at maybe winning this pot. Probably a king sometimes too. I mean, there are only three other opponents here. Ace, ace. And when we turn over an eight, it's not meant to be. Middle position, the guy who only had $665, which is how we pick the size, turns over the winner with ace three offsuit. Oh, and this is how our session's gonna end today. 
Okay, guys, that's a wrap from today's session. A lot of really fun things happen today. And, you know, when you're in the game with a couple of, at least one, maybe two, like, legit billionaires or really, really close to it, you just got to do these flips. You got to do these things. These guys want to have fun. As a pro, part of your job is, is to entertain. And sometimes you just got to suck it up take a little bit of variance. Overall, these games have been pretty good in the Miami area. I'm enjoying them. It's kind of a little bit of a different feel than some of the other places that I've played before. The day, all, all in all, just, it didn't, it didn't go too badly. I've been kind of, eh, kind of breaking even a little bit down here. I should mention that I'm currently in Wynwood. You see this uh, really, really cool street art behind me. Love Wynwood. This is an area outside of downtown. The place really gets hopping on the weekends. Great restaurants, great scene. It's got bars. It's got anything you could want down here. Highly recommend hitting Wynwood if you come down here. I am at Momasan. I've had a couple of things, including the A5 Wagyu Surf and Turf Roll. They sear it off. It's freaking incredible. Also have spicy chicken wontons. They've got salmon skewers. They've got uh, this thing called Buddha kimchi that I love. And also had the sticky ribs. All these things are really, really good. And really enjoyed my meal here at Momasan. Really unique. And the owner of the restaurant is an ex-Iron Chef winner. I think it's Chef Morimoto. He's pretty famous. I'm not super familiar with him, but uh, if you're an Iron Chef fan, you might know who he is. The final results for today, guys, we were in for 3,500. We were out for 2218. That is a loss of $1,282. Not too bad considering the size of the game. Gonna look to do better next time. I really appreciate everyone watching. Please, if you enjoy what you're seeing, hit that subscribe button. We'd really appreciate it. Live King out.